Hi guys, um, I know there's a few of you that use QLC out there and there's, I've seen it cropped up on the forum from time to time that people want to be able to control it in a band situation and they're probably in the same situation as me where um, you play in a band um, but you've also got a bit of lighting that you want to run to turn your gig into more of a show maybe, just add a little bit more theatre to it. So I gave up on this <coughs> when I was trying to use uh, my FCB 1010. I just couldn't get I just couldn't get it to program correctly. I could get this stuff to program perfectly fine. Not an issue. Um, but I couldn't get this to work. I was getting double triggers, missed triggers, all sorts of stuff. And what I was noticing is that when I would build a profile, so I thought I was doing the right thing, build a profile, hit the wizard button, which is just up here, um, I'd hit a first row of buttons. And I noticed that when I'd hit, say, button one, I'd be getting like three different values coming through at the same time. And as a result of that, I'd pick one that was working, assign it, and then when I'd hit it next time, it would actually be given a different signal. I don't know why. I originally thought it was my uh, MIDI interface and things like that, but I've since found out it is not. So what I ended up doing is, is I ended up looking at these boards and looking at why that button worked. What was the settings to get that button working? Because it's never failed for me. And I noticed that it was all set to note on off. And when I was setting up this board, it was defaulted to um, program change. So the first thing I did was keep it really simple. Um, I hit the wizard and I just went through and hit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I left these because I know that they changed the bank. I gave these a wiggle as well and they came up as sliders. This lot here came up as buttons but would miss hit it had all sorts of different things. And then when I went to assign it, it would all it would do weird things. So I knew I had to make a change and that's when I started looking at what this was doing and tried to replicate it within here. And what I discovered is it's better to have these all set up as note on off then assign a parameter on here. So, so if I open um, button 0001, so bank zero, uh, button one, what I've done is I've done note on off, and that, that was a button that worked from the get-go. For some reason, that was already note on off. It might be something to do with it being part of the switching system within it, within the bay rigger for doing external amps and stuff. But it was already note on off, and it had a parameter 22. So then what I did, is I just made a quick note, of all the buttons that I've got, um, all the way through, and including expression pedal A, expression pedal P. And you can see here that I've got 22, which gives me the reference note of an A sharp. Okay. So what I've then done is I've mapped each of these buttons, making sure that they've got the new par parameter, including um, pedal A and pedal B on the um, on the uh, on the um, actual channel operator. So I then gave that a save. So that's what I wanted QLC to receive. But now I needed to send the right thing to QLC so I could do what I wanted to do. So I had to learn how to do that. Now, because there's no kind of like buttons to edit within this bit here, it's all done through these buttons by holding them down, tapping them, confirming and things like that. So I had to learn to do that. So, if I um, hit at the minute, if I just go to my virtual console that I'm trying, that I'm building, I'm still working out what the best way this is going to be to do. But um, just get rid of this. Um, just go cancel, get rid of this, um, and then just go to my virtual console. You can see here that I've kind of got the pedal board. Uh, done here. You can see that I've got strobe white happening at the minute. So it's like a random strobe using the RGB um, matrix controller. And what I've done is I've mapped that to channel button four, so that when I hit four, it turns it off. Okay, I hit three the first time. And I've set up five to be like a rear blinder. So when I'm punctuating symbol splashes, normally I'd put that on a fader, but I've got <laughs> limited pits on here and I don't really want to be doing blinding like with an expression pedal so I've just set a time up and created it into a chase so I hit that and it does and it punctuates 
symbols or whatever. So what I needed to do to do that is make sure that the two were communicating. So all the settings that I'd put into QLC, I needed to make sure were in here. Okay, so, and there's another little layer to this. If I, so the, the way that you need to assign that so when you've de decided what you want each MIDI note to be and you've put them all into there and you've made a note of it all and you've kept it all in order, make sure that you're on the right bank that you want and the button you want to change it on. Okay, now, um, if I go to four, you will notice that um, if I move to expression pedals, nothing moves on here. So I've got this expression pedal here as intensity and this one here as my hazer. And as you can see, nothing happens. Okay, so the strobes are on and I thought, oh, this is some kind of soloing issue. It's not. It's however, it's how I set it up initially and how I need to then make a change for it all. If I go to hit the, I don't know, the um, um, blinder, you can see here how the blinder runs, but I can still control the, um, I want you to believe me, um, um, I can still control the, um, the intensity and things like that. So if I have my rear blinder down and I hit five, you'll notice that just these LED bar tubes uh, come on. I will be sorting that, but that shouldn't just be doing that. Clearly I've set something wrong up. Um, somewhere. Um, it should only work when I do that because the intensity is down. Um, so there's two things you need to do. You need to make sure that your button links to this note that you've defined but you also need to make sure that for when you're running say if 8 became a colour sequence um, on here um, that it does that, but you can still put some expression in, you can still change your faders. So at the minute, I'm on eight, but I could say I want it to be, um, I don't know, a fade from green to blue or something like that, or it um, does my moving heads. It starts my moving heads on a circular thing here. I can select... I can get it to select number eight. If I just go into uh, design mode, if I go to button, this button here, button eight, and go to auto detect, and then if I hit eight, it's recognized it. I can assign it a thing. So I'll just go to, um, let's just go to RGB matrix. Let's go to par, let's go to blends, which I like, and go to abstract. There we go, and okay, I'll come out of design mode. I can now hit eight, and you can see now that I've got this RGB um, color change thing. Um, I will need to set one of these buttons up to be a tap tempo for it. But you'll notice that these don't work, and that's because I've got it working in terms of turning it on and off, and I can uh, hit my blinder and stuff like that. Um, turn it off, hit my blinder. Um, but having eight affected, I cannot change these sliders. So I'm going to take you through what you need to do um, to actually get to get through this. And it all relies on you programming QLC with the right parameter numbers that you have defined and written down, and then knowing how to control the system here. So I want button eight to trigger as it is doing up there. I've already got it working, but I'll take you through it. But I also wanted to use these on here. So what you do is you press eight, because that's the button you want to change. You hold down down until you get a green flashing light. Now that's telling you that you're in edit mode. Confirm that you're in edit mode with enter. Okay, now you can see here that the the button eight is control is only set up at the minute to give a note. Now, when you first do this, you'll notice that one, eight, nine are on and ten isn't. So clearly, it's doing something with switching, something with expression pedals, but nothing to do with this note. 
Right. Um, so I initially turned off these elements and then what I did was I held down this one. Well, no, it was like that. So then I hold it down, turns it on, and then tap it to go into edit mode. Confirm, and it's now telling me what channel to put in there. Now, we know that we're doing button eight, if I look on here, 29, fine. That's actually right, but I'm gonna put it in again. 29, enter to confirm it, job done. So now that, that is working, um, and it's actually just sent a note trigger it and it's, and it's turned it on. If I wanted to, I could now come out of there. If I don't want to use these, I could come out by holding down exit and I'm back into bank mode. And when I hit eight, it turns them on and off, but with no usage on here. I want the expression pedals to work. How do I do that? Press eight, hold down to get into edit mode, confirm edit mode. So there's the note setup that we've already done. We now need to do both of these. So I'm gonna hit eight. So with a long press, tap to get into edit mode, it will flash, confirm edit mode. Now, it's telling me now what channel that's working. Now, the reason why the expression pedals are not working and maybe why when I use the expression pedal, when something's clicked down, that it's not working, it's because it's sending a note 27. Now 27 is actually linked to button six on here for me. So there's clearly gonna be a conflict there. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm gonna reassign that to 32 for expression pedal A. So 32, there we go. Click enter. And now you've got your range of movement, so this is, if it was DMX, it, well, it's from zero, it's from one to 127, which we all know that when we talk about that in um, DMX terms, that takes us to a DMX value of uh, 255. So enter is your lowest range to your highest one. So if you wanted to, you could invert it. Now, pressing enter, brilliant. We've now got the note set up and we've got the expression pedal set up, okay? So now I'm gonna do nine. So I'm gonna hold down nine to turn it on. Tap it to go into edit mode. Confirm edit mode. You can see now it's sending to channel seven. Well, I haven't got anything looking that way. So I look at expression pedal B, 33. So I bang in 33. Hit enter to confirm. Now we've got the range of the pedal. So zero to one, two, seven. That's fine, done. Now I'm just gonna go back into eight because I think that started on one. So I'm fine with it being that channel there. Ah, uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna put that down as being zero. Enter, enter. So that the, the range on here is fine. So still in edit mode. So let's just come out of there by holding Escape. So now we're back into there. So this this button eight now sends, a, when I hit it, it sends a MIDI note of um, 29 to QLC. Now I've already mapped that, because I did that with you, to do the abstract kind of thing. So it's abstract colors there. And if I turn it on and off, winner, winner. But the expression pedals weren't working. Now they are. So now I can bring up the intensity. I can turn on a hazer if need be. But as you can see, I can roll that in there. So it was, a, it was an area that I did when I was first working this out, but that has now sorted it so that we can now assign a number, a, a MIDI number, a MIDI note number on here so the pedals react how they should do. I can also make sure that it sends a consistent number for the um, pedals. Now clearly you could get really clever with this. You could have different pages as I'm setting up so that when banks are in different things, you can then hit, I don't know, six and it changes tempo, for example. You could be really clever with how this wants to be, but I want a really simple setup. So 
If you've got any questions, I'll probably do another video to show how this is actually building on a little bit more, but that is my initial findings so far. So if you um, um, want to see any more, just, uh, just let me know. If you've got any questions, just ask, because I'm working this out at the same time. But um, hopefully that is solving some of the issues that some of you are having, and I certainly did have. So um, thanks for watching.